Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, well, we've heard a lot about polling and how the polling is tightening and technically it has been moving in the more Democrat direction and there's been a lot of questions. Is this a real bump? Is it a sugar high? Is it response bias? Are Democrats just coming home? What's going on here? Because it seems like the polls, when it was Trump v. Biden, Trump led them on average by about three points. Now the average on real clear politics is pretty much a dead heat. And if you're only going to take the polls that were you know, conducted in the past couple of weeks, Harris would be at around a two-point lead or so, give or take. And I think it's a little bit more complicated than just one of those answers. I think that there's nuance to it. But what really matters at the end of the day is how people actually show up, who actually shows up at the only poll that matters, because that's on election day. And while this doesn't fully quantify it, it kind of shows which direction states are trending, and that's voter registration. And that is a very, very telltale sign about which direction a state is going to move. And if they're registering more Republicans, you know, sometimes in the case of Pennsylvania, it's also been ancestral Democrats are just re-registering as Republicans, and that's technically true uh, in the case of Pennsylvania for 2020 and, and many other elections. They've been doing it for a while, but at the end of the day, every single county for the first time this year in Pennsylvania, they've been moving to the right. Even Bucks County in suburban Philadelphia flipped Republican for the first time in, I believe, a while, if not forever. So you're kind of seeing a massive, massive shift in the dynamics of, of the election, and Democrats were not enthused. So with the Kamala Harris bump in the polling, one would anticipate that there would be a Democrat bump, even if it's a temporary one, in terms of voter registrations. But so far, we have not exactly seen that. You talk about what's going on in the polling. Republicans gained over 4,200 voters. Democrats gained not even 2,500. And this data includes active and inactive voter registrations. And in terms of the active voter registration, Republicans are narrowing the gap significantly. They have narrowed it to just 171,000 voters in the state of Pennsylvania, which is absolutely huge because that is showcasing a massive turn to the right, a higher floor for Donald Trump overall in the state of Pennsylvania. And when you talk about this happening, it's not just in Pennsylvania, it's in nearly every single state. And you talk about voter registration changes, the updated chart from the 2020 election until now. Republicans are at a net gain in Alaska, by, you know, a few thousand votes. They're uh, at a net gain in Arizona by what looks to be 130 some thousand uh, new voters that they've expanded their lead. They've even expanded it in California of all states. You know, they are losing a bit in Colorado, which has basically become the Democrat Florida, but they're not losing by much. Uh, they're gaining in Connecticut, Delaware on net, Florida, They've gained over a million on net, which is just absolutely huge. You look at Idaho, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana. I mean, those two states, it's mainly been ancestral Democrats just fleeing uh, continuously. You look at Maine, they've gained on net because, you know, Democrats, they're more in the negatives. So that's kind of playing a role there. Maryland, they've actually gained on net. Massachusetts, they've gained on net. Nebraska, they've gained. Nevada, they've gained 60 thousand almost voters on net the state was decided by just you know half of that in the 2020 presidential election new hampshire 50,000 well, i think a lot of that's people you know registering to vote for nikki haley in the primary crossover support so that's kind of you know skewing that a little bit but new jersey they've gained a lot new mexico even new york north carolina oklahoma Oregon, Pennsylvania, that's like 300,000 on net. Rhode Island, South Dakota, Utah, West Virginia, Wyoming, every state except Colorado, they're gaining on net. In many cases, they're adding voters. Some cases, Democrats are just losing more. Either they're moving out of state or uh, they're just not exactly updating their registration. They're disillusioned. Either way, that's a net benefit for Republicans across the board. And you look at just even the past month or so, you're seeing these changes. Pennsylvania already, they're gaining. 
uh, quite a bit in Pennsylvania. The change from July was significant. You're seeing that here. Um, and you look at North Carolina, another swing state, they're gaining. Now, technically, there's a large independent population, but a lot of those voters in the independent column, they do tend to vote Republican more than not, especially at the presidential level, maybe down ballot. They're, you know, a little bit more malleable or less likely to go Republican, but still Nevada, they keep on gaining in Nevada significantly. That gap was 90,000. Now that gap is, if you talk about active party registration, that gap is now less than 30,000, which is absolutely huge. They keep gaining. And you look at Florida. I mean, do we even have to talk about Florida? Because that is a massive, massive shift that we're seeing in the state of Florida. A million net voters that they've gained since the 2020 election where Democrats actually had an advantage in Florida. They did. Um, but already that's been wiped out. And then some Republicans have like a million voter advantage. Democrats, I really hope they waste money in Florida. It's not going to bode well for them because this is really what matters. Not necessarily what a poll, you know, shows that could be inflated by response bias, but where's the raw data uh, going? And maybe Democrats are stopping the bleeding for a little bit because they have Kamala. There's more people registering and who knows how it's going to shake out down the stretch, but Republicans have really just been getting their act together in terms of voter registration lately, uh, even since 2022. It's their time to show up to the polls and bring it home. And when you look at younger voter registration as well, that's more Republican in Pennsylvania than it really has ever been. So there is some evidence that younger voters are shifting right. Even in some urban areas like Philadelphia, you're seeing Republicans really start to gain in those places, Philadelphia County, you know, Donald Trump, so long as he gets 20 something percent in Philadelphia County, it's going to be very difficult for him to lose the state. So you just keep all this in mind as we move forward. It's not just like the polling is exactly definitive because I firmly believe that a lot of what we're seeing is due to a response bias. I'm not saying it's all fake, but Kamala Harris is not flipping Donald Trump voters to her column. I think she'll get more you know, undecided independents who were never going to vote for Trump on board. I think she energizes Democrat voters to show up. I believe that. I think maybe she might eat into the RFK Jr. vote share, which could cause Trump some problems. But still, I don't think she's eating into that Trump 47, 48 uh, percent that's always going to show up for Donald Trump no matter what. It just comes down to who shows up at the end of the day. Because you look at the response bias, it's more clear than ever Look at this poll, which is technically even a right-leaning pollster, Redfield and, and Winton. Uh, you look at who leans uh, closer on the issues, and it's not even Trump or Harris. It's Republican or Democrat. And keep in mind, this poll only came out, and it was like, what, Harris by three or something nationally? But abortion, environment, even health care, you kind of understand why those issues would align with the Democrats. But election integrity, you know, that's an iffy one. The economy, D plus eight under this circumstance. I mean, that's just, that's insane. That's absurd. Inflation, siding with the Democrats on inflation, foreign policy, crime with the Democrats, really? And immigration only R plus two after you have a Biden led, Biden caused border crisis. Of course, if you're a partisan Democrat, you can look at this data and try to rationalize it. But, you know, obviously just trying to see things objectively. Yeah, Democrats have a lead on abortion. They have a lead on the environment. You can't deny it. It's also not by that margin for the record. And immigration, it's not going to be R plus two. That, that, that is not true. Uh, technically, you know, if they pulled Trump and Harris on it, it's still Trump at the single digits, but that's Harris's signature failure. And part of it is maybe some people don't know, but a lot of it is also, this is a response bias. And I think this is the, the largest source of evidence. You could say, well, pollsters try to weigh and they do, but still you always can't account for, for every possible little thing. Uh, in terms of the electorate and the polling, you know, when it was Trump v. Biden, the samples were not as dem favorable as they are now, which again, I understand if you're, you know, more likely to answer a poll, that does mean you're probably more likely to show up and vote. I'm not going to deny that exactly, but it's, it's a little bit deeper than that in terms of this response bias, because there's so much that they don't really account for, but Democrats are enthused. They're more likely to answer polls. And in every summer, every August, since 1984, 
Democrats have had a more sizable lead in the polls than Harris currently does right now. So there is that response bias that also comes into play, and maybe it didn't quite do so with Biden as the nominee, but it does with Harris. But even so, even in some of these polls, we've only had two polls that were released um, you know, which, which included data over the past, what, seven days, even if you want to back it up even further, polls that actually came out um, over this week or, or even last week, and you look at it, and it's CNBC, Trump by two, Rasmussen, Trump by five, and then Morning Consult, it's, tr- it's Harris by three, but Harris was up by four in their last poll. So it's not like she's exactly you know, continuing to gain even in a very left slanted poll like morning consult, as we like to say morning compost. And she's got the sugar high, she's got the left enthused. But could this be the, you know, peak? Could it be the start of a downfall? It's possible. We just got to keep fighting and and register voters, but also get them out to vote because the only poll that matters is election day. But that's kind of a little tidbit of evidence, both of these uh, pieces, either ridiculous answers within polling that just don't add up with reality and also registration data changes continuing last month in the last couple of weeks to benefit Republicans at a significant rate. So it shows that a lot of the Harris hype is just that it's hype. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.